um, you know, I'll just I'll just make the franchisees' lives miserable in my own also, no, if I'm not yet really franchisable. So these are the criteria that we look at uh, to determine franchisability. Uh, one of the first is credibility. Okay, and credibility comes in the form of the brand name, no? if you have a high recognition, or the team, the, bis the, the management team, the owners that are behind uh, a brand or a concept. No? Of course, the more recognizable the brand name is, or the longer the experience of the management team in franchising or in business, then the higher the credibility of, uh, of that concept. Uh, one of the main reasons why people buy a franchise, instead of putting up their own business from, from scratch, you know, their own startup, is they want that name recognition, you know, they want that credibility, because that results in uh, instant customers. So, in many businesses, uh, you need to develop your customers, your clientele, you have to uh, sample, you know, give them samples so they know what the products are. But when people buy a franchise, from day one, people, the customers already know what the brand stands for, what they're selling, what the products are. So, uh, credibility is one of the keys to franchisability. Um, having said that, uh, we've worked with companies that have not been, um, that they don't have so many branches yet. Um, no, when, we, when we started working with Generics Pharmacy, they only had one branch. No? And it wasn't, um, it wasn't, um, the way it looked before is not as um, professional looking as, as it does now. And um, so, Credibility in terms of brand recognition was not very high, but they rated high on other factors, no? and one of them was uh, the, the market for the product. No? Back then, there weren't really many um, generic branded medicine, and um, they would be the, one of the first players in that market. So you have to look at all these criteria holistically. No? Don't just, it's not just... Um, you know, kind, and if, if it's not satisfied, then you can't be franchised. No? It's, it's all taken together. No? Okay, the second criteria would be differentiation. So, uh, this is also known as uh, Unique Selling Proposition or USP. No? Uh, when Ms. William Hoko uh, talked earlier, she's mentioned asking about, you know, what, what's different about your salon? No? What, what makes you different than, than others out there? And um, you mentioned you only use organic uh, products and that's the source of the differentiation. No? So you need to ask yourself as well, um, what is different about my product or my service? No? Am I different or am I just another player? No? Is there somebody out there who's already doing what I'm doing and maybe even selling it uh, at a more affordable price than I am? So, and this question is not just for franchising, no? it's also for business in general. Am I, um, am I doing something that uh, nobody else is doing or am I doing this better than what's already out there? No? So, the higher the, uh, the differentiation, uh, the stronger your USP, then the higher uh, you score in that category for franchisability. Transferability of knowledge is the ability to be able to teach somebody who doesn't know anything about your business uh, how to run, how to run your unit, how to run your store. Huh? So, if uh, if it will take a very long time to learn how to run your business, and maybe it's not uh, franchisable, or you need to structure it so that you teach them only certain aspects, uh, and the others can be provided by professionals or even you as a franchisor. Huh? Um, for example, there are franchises of uh, dermatology clinics or facials, and of course the uh, dermatology aspect of that takes a long time to learn, uh, but running the business itself can be taught. No? So what they do is they, um, they franchise uh, that aspect, which is running the business, marketing, day-to-day -day operations, and then uh, the professional side, uh, the medical side, um, 
is, is brought in. No? So, how long will it take for somebody to learn how to run your business? Okay. If it will take a very long time, then maybe you need to structure it so that uh, they will, um, you know, some of the aspects you need to provide or they need to get from, from outside sources. Number four is adaptability. And this talks about uh, the flexibility of your business when you go into different markets. Okay. For example, um, if you see KFC in uh, China, no, they have different products than those that we're selling now, no? from, from uh, selling in the Philippines. Uh, McDonald's in India, no, since uh, uh, cows are sacred in India, they don't serve uh, burgers made out of beef. No? So they have um, the Maharaja Mac, which is made out of chicken, and you know, different, different products. No? Yet, if you look at the store and you experience uh, the service, uh, you know you're in a McDonald's store. No? So, is your business adaptable to different markets or are you um, fixed and cannot cope with the demands of different markets? Um, because if it's very regional, it's only, um, it will only be in demand where you are, then uh, maybe you should just open company-owned stores instead of going into franchising where uh, the reach will be much farther. Okay, do you have refined and successful prototype operations? So, um, there's several key words here, no? successful and, and prototype. So, um, prototype because do you have an actual proof of concept? No? Proof of concept means that uh, you're not only profitable on paper, you have units that are actually making money. No? And the reason why we include that is we've been approached in the past uh, by people who, who have a business plan but they don't have a store yet. No? And they say, oh, but on paper it's very, very profitable, very fast return. And you know anything can good can look good on paper, no? Um, but can you make that uh, profitable day in and day out? No? Um, proof of concept. No? Is it actually selling? No? And is it successful? No? Um, franchising is basically duplicating. No? So if uh, your units are not profitable, then you would just be duplicating that for your franchisees. No? So, um, you can, you'll make life very hard for your franchisees and for you as well because they'll start complaining to you. No? We have systems that can be documented in a manual. No? So, um, as I mentioned, the manual is the basis for um, duplicating operations and maintaining standards. Okay, some more keys to franchisability and a very important criteria is um, affordability and return on investment. So affordability is uh, how much does somebody have to invest to put up uh, a business such as yours. No? Um, in the last few years, the most popular franchise formats are the carts and the kiosks. No? And that's because there are much there are more people that can, can afford that uh, investments uh, around 500,000 or less no? than those that can afford investments of the Jollibee's and the McDonald's that are 25 million no? and even the full restaurants in the uh, 8 to 10 million range. No? So is your business affordable? Um, but that doesn't mean that if your business requires uh, high capital to start that it's not franchisable. No? because you also have to consider the return on the investment. Okay. Your business, uh, the, num the, the numbers of a business might be very affordable, low investment, pero matagal yung return. No? So that's not going to be franchisable either. Um, however, a business that may have a, uh, a high, higher investment but has good returns, and uh, very consistent could be much more franchisable than somebody who's affordable but uh, takes a long time to get a return. So that has to be considered together. Another important criteria, number nine, is market trends and conditions. 
So, what is the demand like for your product or service? No? Um, is the demand um, permanent in nature? Can it be sustained? Or is it just a fad no? that will only be around for the next few months, the next few years? Uh, or will the product or service become